Hi, welcome to another Five Basic Live video. Uh, this is episode five in our Creating a Library series. A series is kind of making a small XML phraser. Probably, you might call it XML mini or something like that. Who knows? Well, we've, so far, we've got our library to a point where it can read an XML document. Uh, we've made a few assumptions about the document. We haven't test tested many different types of documents with it, but it loads the one we, we provide it with, which is always uh, fraught with danger. <laughs> but the one problem at the moment is that we can only load one of these files in at one time. Um, I guess for many projects that's not, not a problem. And there seems to be a a fault there. I did notice this in the other, other version. Uh, it should be listing out uh, the include files in the project. And I think I've made a a bit of a well I've tweaked the phraser and that changed well yeah it's where it adds the parent. I noticed this the other day and I was doing something else. This is actually the second time I've made this video. I was interrupted so many times and then had the computer hang and do all kinds of weird things, so it's like we'll test that again, debug mode, we should get our expected output. We do. I'll just check our keys uh, in the documents keys array. We have include zero and we have include zero name. Yep, that's functioning the way the way it should. Right, getting back to our problem. I guess it depends on on how you look at those things, isn't it? You know, at the moment we can only load one XML document into memory, uh, read the information from it. If we wanted to load a second one, we would have to load that document and that would destroy the one that's previously loaded. You know, in some cases that may not be a problem, in other cases it may, it may be. So I was thinking about this a bit and um, one way you could do this is you could uh, when, when we load the document here you could pass in your own your own XML document structure. And that would mean every time that you have to read something from it, you're passing in your structure into these. Every function that uh, is kind of exposed in public. I think the method I prefer actually is kind of like how the image commands work. So we can. With images, you can sort of let's say if we had an image 10, we could just go, you know, render to image 10, and then our, our uh, primitive graphics commands will just draw to that surface. We can draw a dot there, and, you know, a line, whatever, um, print text to that surface, so on. You know. We don't have to actually keep saying, uh, you know, draw a dot on image 10, you know, draw a line on image 10, print on image 10, or something like that. Which can be a bit, well, it's, well, it's frustrating, but just, not, just graphics retyping for nothing. So what I think we might do is we might make our library have like a current document and it will store an internal collection or, or an array of all these documents. And we'll have, um, when we load a document, it will return a little index to it. And uh, we can change what document we're reading and writing to at our will. So to do this, we head across to the XML uh, source. Just trying to think of what we're going to do. What we'll do is we'll, we'll make a structure and we'll 
that each one will hold these kind of basic properties. So, what have we got? Uh, by structure, I mean type. So, we'll call it XML document. Put a closing in type there. Now, just like our current library is using, using these two globals to represent the number of uh, fields found in, in the, the file it loaded and the max number of which is the size of the arrays as it stands we'll have two variables there we'll just make them shorter we'll make them uh, we might call it field count and we'll have one called field max size so this field here is going to represent this variable this one here will represent this one here the other two, well, if you want these to be the dynamic arrays, we'll use a handle of, of these, and, which is a little clumsy initially, but it will let us do what we want to do. We don't have any sort of parental sort of issues, clumsy kind of typing issues. Although some would argue it's probably, this is kind of a clumsy approach as well. Anyway, so we'll have a field here. We'll call this uh, this is keys array handle. It's just an integer, and we'll have another one that's called data array handle. So each one of our documents that's loaded into memory has these these four very basic properties. Um, we'll probably need to add some more. But for the time being, that's enough to represent what we have. But we do need an array here to store, to house all of these documents. So we can call this, um, yeah, XML documents. And we'll give it zero exit XML document. So this array, when we load a new document, we're going to allocate an index from this array of this type. Return the index back back for the user, and then we then refer to this document via its index. The same way as what you do if you're loading an image or a sprite using the the you know if you use the load new image command. So PB is taking care of what what index is uh, allocated for you. We'll do the same sort of thing for our little library. So we need a, a little function to set up this structure when we're going to create a new document. Uh, at the moment, the whole library is just using these, these four fields here, these global variables, really. Oh, and there's two of them are arrays, but... You know what I mean. Um, so what we'll do, just lost my train of thought there for a second, sorry. Well, we'll make our initialization function. This will be a private function. When the user's not going to be calling this function. XML um, I'll call it new document. We might want to pass it something from initially. Uh, yeah, so it will return an integer called, called XML index. Now, let's get to it. So, what we want to do is we want to ask PB for a free index in this array. And it's a, a function called getArrayCell. Um, yeah. Having a mental blank today. No, 
Oh, sorry, get free cell. What am I going on about? It's very late. We call get free cell. We pass it the handle of the array we want, we want it to search. And it will return an index that's above zero. If the array is not big enough, it'll be resized for us. So here, what we need to do, you know, just a bit of a habit there, I'll, I'll verify that's actually above there to make sure that this, this did what it was meant to do. Perhaps there's some possible way that it, that it might fail. Right. Even though I can't think of a way that it might fail. I guess if your computer was running out of memory, then that function would fail. Okay, so we've found, we found this free index in the in our XML documents array. It is above zero. And then we go, let's allocate an XML document structure to put it in this position to make sure that this now has, has something in it. And we could just go, initially all these fields will be zero. Um, kind of a, I kind of like those things to be done. You might want to pass in a parameter here that will initialize you know, the max size of the structure or something like that. So that will create that. But these are these array handles. We actually need to create a function that returns string arrays. Set XML. Um, no, we'll just call it make string array. Have a size parameter. I hope that's not crackling too much. I was having terrible problems the other day with, with uh, the audio cracking or crackling a lot. And when it's bad enough that you've got to listen to me ramble on as it is, let alone me crack, you know, crackling away. Okay, so this little function here makes an array of whatever size we, we require. Probably should check the sizes, you know, of some reasonable size. Lower than 4096 then. Yeah. Shouldn't really matter. Now, when that array is returned, the handle of this structure is returned as an integer. So we can just actually assign that handle to any integer we like. So what we're doing up here, so we've got this keys array handle. This remembers our the handle of the array we just created, so it's not orphaned and lost in memory, which would be bad. We'll create the data one the same size. Um, I guess we'll just do size equals 4096. Fill the size structure in there so they're all the same. Okay, we've got a bit of a... Right, so we call this function here, we should get the index of a newly created structure within within this XML documents array. Now, as a user of the library, we not we never refer to this stuff here directly. Even, well, we can't really, you know, in PB, you can't say, this is private, don't touch it, sort of thing. We just name things that are inappropriate for users. Uh, it has the same, <laughs> the same thing, really. Uh, although, you can see, and the, the IDE will show how the, the functions at the top are our public functions, as you might know them. The ones at the bottom are considered our sort of private functions for the library. Yeah, you know. Alright, let's try and compile that and see if we uh, made any dumb typos. 
should still run the same way as before. We haven't actually changed anything in the code itself. Seems to be working. Let's get to hacking this thing together. I might move these to the bottom of the code. Now that I've sort of written them. And we'll put a banner above them. Uh, the bottom of the code is really just our functions that do odd jobs. I would call them really. So we might have a uh, Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, private mm. document functions or something. Just so, you know, when you're scrolling down, you can kind of see this is a different section of the code. Right, so when we are, when we, to make this thing use our new structure, we're going to have to alter our existing functions. Let's have a look at load first of all. Load now needs to return a field. Our XML index field. XML XML index just for sort of consistency. Right. We'll see, at the top of the code, we'll make sure this is set to zero. Uh, so anything above zero, we're considering this to be a, a successful load, or at least a document loaded, but maybe it might have some phrasing errors in it. The library's not smart enough to do checking over that stuff at the moment. We're just going to be winging this all as we go. We should still be able to run this. But uh, let's check here. So we load the document, we should just get our index back from the XML load function. Oh, I think we think our little. I don't know. Correct. Well, at the very top there, see one that that is um that would be the first free cell within that within our global XML documents array. We, what we might do is we might just comment those out. Right, now the loading is not, not actually working per se, it, what it is doing is, it, is it's creating the, uh, it's loading the document as it was before, just hit stop, if we find XML documents, there it is there, this is the, the library's global array that's holding all the different documents that are loaded into memory, at the moment there's only one. We probably could have a file name in there too, couldn't we? Like what what the file was uh, was loaded. Uh, anyway, this, this structure is actually created. It's got a max fields of this, and these we've got two handles here from our arrays. So we're doing something. We might add that file name to it actually. So file name, when we go to load, we could pass document the file name here, or we could 
make an assignment here. We do need to check this to make sure it returns something that we're happy makes sense. So we'll do that. XML index dot file name equals whatever the file is up there. File string. All right. We've created a, a, an array in some places to hold that stuff, but we're not. Our Fraser still is looking at the original global variables. So we need to alter the Fraser so it will actually use these, this version here of these structures. Just hope that makes sense. All right. So I'm going to pass that into there. Uh, and I'll add that as a parameter into, into here. This will be our XML index. Uh, now, the, when the phrase is doing its job looking at the document, the parent is, is correct. That's, we just need that thing there. I think we just need to add it to, yeah, this. Yeah, we need to add it. Oh, okay. This is going to be the main change. This function here adds the key and data to our currently our old school array. I'll make a copy of the array. Just call it, you know, old something. Maybe original is probably a better idea. But now this time. We're going to have a version that passes in the, the index. And then in here, we're going to do some stuff that might make you freak out a bit. Yeah, so, so don't get too horrified. Okay, XML documents. Add key data. Let's grab field count. Uh, this is going to become count. This will be our local count. So count is here. I might uppercase that so they're a bit more consistent. Max size will do the same thing. I think I call that field max size. I hope so anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Feel the max size. Mm. I can feel my hand touching the microphone lead all the time and a bit paranoid about that because you get clicks and pops and all kinds of stuff. Okay. So if the count's gonna gonna overflow the current maximum size of our rough of our internal arrays, we need to expand these and then expand them out. This is where we're going to do some weird stuff. We're going to make an array stub. Uh, okay, we'll just call this local local key. And really, if these just add. They kind of they make an array definition. But these arrays don't have their own data. The whole idea of these is that you can, once, I've, once you've declared it, I can now do this. I can set the data from any handle I've uh, previously created. Now, I think it was keys array handle, I called it. And the other one was uh, local data. They are string arrays, so they do have the, the dollar sign at the end. And once they're, once I've set, once I've written my handle into this array stub, it just works like a normal array. So 
so I can read it in the array there. You know, data max size, and just I just set that there. So because if we modified the max number of elements, we better write this back into the structure here. Because otherwise that will break. Uh, local. Local data, and these are account and count. Now, so this version here is writing to the pair of arrays that our current document has. And that can be any size. If you want to have arrays within arrays, you can do that too. The same principle. You don't have to keep referring to the parent all the way through to access them. Oh, you know, which is it <laughs> depends on, on, on your kind of where you come from as to whether that's a good idea or not. But this is just how you can do it in, in Flybase. Hit count, we'll add one to it. I'm thinking that should work, but I know that other places in the code call this function or it doesn't have this index in it, so we'll just compile it, just to see if it'll take us there. Oh, there's one. Where are we? Okay, we're in the Fraser there. Oh, of course, yeah. So we want to pass out our XML, no, oh, sorry, index. And it looks to me too like the code properties will need the same requirements. I just try and compile that again. Yep. XML index. XML index. All right. Now we should get another parameter mismatch if we try and compile when we do. That's because this doesn't have the index passed to it. Save it. Now I don't think this will work. If I stop the program, I go across to the global XML documents, we can see that our field count is this, our file name of the document is this, max size, we, that looks like it's actually working. So the loader looks like we've, we've made our required modifications, but now we need to do something for these read functions, primarily the read stream. Um, we might actually do the check function first, actually. Where is it? Get key exists. Mm. Now, if we, we want to have the library have its own concept of what the current document is, we're going to need to add another global variable. Horrify people again. Oh my god. So we'll have XML current document index. Gee, what was I typing there? <laughs> oh, there we go. Finally got that. When we load a document, Uh, what we might do is we might make when we create a new document, this will be, be then become the current document. So everything following that, uh, every function we call after that will be using this particular structure within that array. 
rather than just us, the user, always having to supply the the parent all the time, which can get very tedious. Uh, I think it was a new document. All right. Set the the current document the library is using. So really, it's just the index within that within that, within that global array. That's important because when we when we use our interface functions, we need to know we need to, to do some checks before we start trying to pull data out of the array. The array because we don't know which array it is or where it is. So we check index. Is index bigger than zero? To make sure it's uh, it's most likely allocated, then we should do an allocation test. We'll check if this document is actually allocated. It has some structure at this point. Uh, if this returns anything other than zero, when we query a typed array like that, it should return the handle of that type. If so if there's nothing there, it should be zero. If it's something, then it's a type structure. So when we get to here, we can be pretty confident that this is a legal structure we're reading from. And we kind of need just a, a local version of our keys. Hmm. We'll make our right uh, local. Uh, local keys. I can see myself cutting and pasting some of that stuff we just wrote before. Yeah, let's just grab those and throw away, throw away anything we don't need. Uh, we probably should make a little a verification function in here that does some of this stuff for us, but for the time being. Okay, we only need the key array, so we don't just need that one. Do we need the max size? We do need max size. Initialize key, get rid of that. Okay, so we're doing a search of local key string array for the key name that the user supplies us with. And um, well, we don't need max size, which is good actually. Just need the how many rows are in this array, and that should work. We better do a compile test, see if we've made no stupid errors. <coughs> Seems to be compiling. All right. We'll check for this field here. Mm. Get key exist. Shouldn't be a dollars there. It's not returning a string, it's returning an integer. Let's find out. Type doesn't exist. Ah, there we go. So it stopped us from reading something that is bogus. <coughs> oh, that's correct too. So, XML index is not all we, we need to be reading from. We need to be reading from our global index. Okay, saying, saying that that field exists. Um, I'll just say for now I trust that and believe it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I guess we could have a little function elsewhere that just returns the position of something. Because down here in the read functions, 
we pretty much going to be cloning the same same piece of code. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. We'll get our read working. I really hope you poor people are uh, following what my sort of weird train of thought in this whole project. Uh, or picking up some strange things about PV you didn't know. Either way, that's cool. So we can go local local key, we want to search that array. We want to search from here to count. And we want to get data out of local array. Local key. Oh, sorry, local data. Make a tiny optimization there, really. Not that it's that, that needed, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, when you copy array, array handles or handles in general in PV, it's just copying an integer. You're not making a copy of the array. Um, now it should be local data. Just check that it compiles. So we haven't made any weird typos. Oh, I haven't made any weird typos there. But let's just get rid of that. Um, they're all just read strings. So we'll just try it. <laughs> I can't guarantee it'll work, but we'll try it. Wow, it does seem to be working. Mm -hmm. For these string names here, we could actually have, for our debug output, we can have a bit more information about uh, the current document we're reading when, when this call is occurring. Wow. That's gone surprisingly well. Surprisingly. Hmm. What I can see myself doing there is kind of shortening this up a little bit. We might have a little public, sorry, a little, little secondary function that does some of that, some of that horrible grunt work down here. Mm. Make it a sub, I don't really want. Uh, Z XML Make it so get document field count. And we'll kind of do val some validation on it. So the idea is that we have a simple function that does oh, I just stock in it, wasn't it? have a simple function that does a bunch of this testing and returns the, the count for us. But we also should, there needs to be a secondary comparison here. If XML index lower than or equal to get array elements XML documents. Is it documents or documents? Caps lock in this case drove me crazy again. The whole
whole point of this is we want to make sure that when we get something out of the function, so we're kind of adding some some to checking functions, but we're also going to make it return something of use for us. I don't need that in there. Okay, so this little function here is general purpose, and it does a it checks that our index is above zero, and our index is within the our array size, so we can't get any overflows. Checks to see if that there's something allocated at this position within that array. In other words, it, it, does this thing actually exist? If it does, it returns the count for us. Oh, bit of a typo there. That would have been one of those little, little insidious bugs that would have been hard to spot later on. We really should be writing this with explicit enable now. We might do that next time. Archiduck, let's go back to our read function and uh, sorry read string function it was uh, oh, I just dropped that didn't I silly idiot okay so we don't need this or that. If count is actually bigger than zero, then thing exists. We can get rid of that there as well. We had a bit of overhead, but a little bit of a little bit cleaner than what it was before. Just check it works again. May not. If I've stuffed up, it seems to be working. Now, what we need to do is we need to update the read integer in the float uh, fields to do that. So I'll just cut that across. This is the read integer version. our closing end if in there. Position local key. We do have those. And the data. I'm doing a, a value of this position so it's returning the integer of whatever that string there was. Uh, where's, a, where's a place where we can use that? There's one. The first test here is calling it read string, so it returns this this uh, this key as a string. Let's just do it as an integer. Don't know if it'll work or not. I'll give it a go. That's the string version and that's the integer, so that does seem to be working properly. I tried to read this as a a float. That would probably still work as well actually. What we what we need to do now is we need to get rid of the old These structures here we don't need them anymore. We don't need those globals either, because everything's now being replicated with our XML documents uh, typed array. 
with n using a document structure in place of a couple of worst variables. So we've still got some globals. We've got the this this array here is global, and the index is global. But that's about all. All right, so we'll, we want to update. Just check we've finished with that one. This is the read integer version. Looks like it's working. Read float. The only bad thing about doing sort of cutting and pasting things together like this is that you can introduce some sort of dumb errors into your code if you're not careful. Um, and it probably it probably is time that we turn ex our explicit mode on to try and prevent those things from happening. data. So the float version uses the floating point or the val version, the, sorry, the floating point version of val. Just to make that clear. Go back to here. This reads reads this field as an integer and then reads it as a float. So with any luck it should work. Touch wood. Seems to. All right. Now, if I load another document into memory, so I'll reload the same thing. <laughs> it won't know. And look at our XML document structure in the debugger. Hit stop. Go to variables. XML documents here. We should have two of them. They're the same because they've loaded the same document into each one. We do actually have two documents in memory at once. What we can't do at the moment is change between documents. Uh, to do that, we would need a, I guess, a set document. So you would give it the index of the document you want to move to, and, and uh, that would be it. Have a quick go of making a function. Got a get function there. There are read functions and yeah, we'll call it set document. Change the current document. The library is looking at. So we need to do just grab that template there. Here we'll go set document feels alright I guess. Our index, XML index, the index of our document, XML um, document index. Uh, we do need to do the, the same verification, really. I'll use, we probably should do all those verifi verifications. As in making sure that. You know, is this no well, I'll repeat that if we want so we should do some checks on this on this index here like you know if is it bigger than zero if it's not you know
you know, um, we want to throw an error to the debugger. Uh, we'll use our existing one here. Yeah, so we're passing this new document index. We'll just check if this is different than this. If the current document index is different, it's not equal to here, then we bother to look at it. At it. We check the count. If the document has something in it, then it must exist. And we can change this for this. And that should let us change the document. We might just set a debug message in here, uh, XML set document. Uh, we use the file name from there. At the moment we're loading the same document twice, so it's not like a give us anything too interesting to look at. Uh, was it file name? Yeah. Do a quick compile, see if we made any typos. Seems okay. Now when we control this, Hmm. When we load the when we create the document here, we could actually do that in here. Um, XML. Uh, XML index. Oh, it's the second index of that. Let's just try that out. I wish that wouldn't get pushed to the back all the time. Look at the console. Yep. Does seem like it's working. Because the loader will actually splice our file. XML index two. I'll print that. Let's print the index and I'll print the status of this function here. So we'll return return a value. Um, have a field called status. So I get to here. It's all pretty good. Status equals true. Uh, else is gonna, not going to equal that. If the current document is equal to that, yep. Count count is bigger than bigger than zero. Ah. Our status is returning zero. So something's not right there, is it? What I normally do Just 
with some comments, different index. Mm. Let's try it again. See how we're going. Probably getting a bit long for this episode and uh, pretty tedious kind of stuff. But we have got our document, multi document stuff at work. Oh, just run it normally. Oh, that actually is working. Uh, when you load the second document, yeah, sorry. What we need to do here is we need to set this to index one. I mean, loading this document here sets the internal library to look at the new document which is loaded. So we have to set it back to the first one if we want to actually get some response from it. I think we might change how that sort of behaves after. Yeah, now it's actually giving us what I expected to see. Down here, it said, let's change document to this this one here. But at the moment, the, the two documents in memory are the same file, so we can't really tell what's going on. They're, they're not holding different stuff. They're just holding the same stuff. But um, there we go. It does actually let you load multiple documents and let's grab information from them. That's not that hard to use and hasn't had much testing either so I wouldn't say you can go and use it in your real world project just yet. But hey, it's, um, it does work. Uh, but uh, more importantly I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching uh, watching today's video and picked up a few a few ideas and hopefully I wasn't too obtuse about what was going on. I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll I'll catch you some other time. So goodbye.